I'm gonna try to speak about privacy without killing everyone with technical details. Mm, that's not gonna be very easy. Let's start with uh, the tools that we're gonna use. So, um, ZK Snarks, I hope most of you at least heard this expression before. It's uh, when you ever heard about the term crypto magic, this is the pinnacle of what can be called crypto magic. This is probably the fastest growing field in cryptography right now. It's a primitive which allows one party to prove to the other party that it knows some data without revealing this data. So, as we can see in the picture, for example, it can allow Alice to prove that she knows some X with some specific property without revealing the X. So, she just can just send the proof P which doesn't contain X and just convinces Bob that, that she knows X. So, this may sound a bit abstract. So, let's, uh, let's see some more real life example. Well, that's a bit abstract as well. So, how it's usually used is that Alice has some private data which is very fine, verified against the blockchain. And she can uh, update this data to the new one and just prove to the blockchain that everything is okay. So, again, even more real life example. Let's have some parties with some tokens. So, right now, uh, there is Alice with 13 tokens A and, A and 35 tokens B, and this is her secret. No one knows how many tokens, tokens she owns. So, uh, and the same, uh, same goes for the other parties, for, for Bob and Carol. So, what they can do is they can invalidate this current state and create the new one where Bob has uh, less tokens A and uh, Carol has more tokens A, and then they can produce the proof that actually what happens is a legal transfer. So there is no double spending, no one is minting any new tokens. What happens is only a legal transfer of tokens from Bob to Carol. And what's the most important here is that when you just observe the chain, the only thing you can see is the proof P which doesn't reveal what actually happens. So, uh, for any outside observer, it looks like any other on-chain action. There is no way to tell how many tokens were, were sent. There is no way to tell that Bob and Alice were involved in this action. Uh, so, this basically is a uh, base for protocols such as Zcash, for example, or uh, more modern uh, Manta or Espresso network, and it allows for for transacting among parties. You can actually add some additional uh, additional constraints here. For example, you may demand that the transactions are below some specific amount um, to, for example, satisfy some legal uh, legal rules like a travel rule, which is known in US. Uh, so. Summarizing, what ZK Snarks allow users to do is to keep secrets which are verified against the chain. Now, um, the question is, does it have any limitations? So, we can we can do normal transfers here. The question is, can we do DeFi using ZK Snarks? Uh, and the short answer for this question is no, we cannot. So. What actually happens in DeFi, what's the, what's the difference between normal transfers and DeFi, is that in DeFi, most, mostly users want to interact with smart contracts, which doesn't have any natural operator or, ma or manager. So, to privately operate with smart contracts, we would need to have some option of the chain to keep its own secrets, or to smart contract to keep its own secrets. And the thing about blockchain is that state of smart contract needs to be actually known by all the validators because all the validators need to be able to proceed with the blockchain, so to compute the, all the transactions. So, well, with most blockchains which are permissionless, the fact that something is known by all the validators basically means that it's known by the entire world. So now the question is, mm, can we allow blockchain to keep its own secrets and are there any use cases for such a thing? So first, let's uh, 
let's start with use cases. Uh, this example is very similar to what we've seen with Alice and Bob sending each other tokens. The difference is that now Alice is sending tokens to the blockchain and she is receiving some tokens to, from the blockchain. So you may think about it as interacting with, for example, Uniswap. What happens in Uniswap is it's an interaction between a single user and the blockchain without any counterparty. And Usually in DeFi, it's uh, it's seen as a pretty convenient because finding a counterparty through a blockchain it's it's usually pretty problematic. The volumes for most of the tokens are low enough that it's very uh, very hard to fi find someone who would be interested in swapping tokens in the opposite direction. This is actually the core reason for which uh, which decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap are are gaining uh, so much traction. But you don't actually need to actively search for a counterparty for the trade, but you can actually trade just against against the blockchain. So the problem here is that, as I said, it's pretty hard to make it private because that would require blockchain to keep the secrets. And this is how private decentralized exchange would operate. But not, not only. In a matter of fact, this is how almost every DeFi protocol operates. So for example, lending protocol. It's basically the same team. You are sending some tokens and receiving some other tokens back. Even if you are just a liquidity provider, you are sending some tokens and receiving LP tokens back. This is true for almost any DeFi protocol. It's just a single interaction. There is some computation happening on the blockchain, but from the mm, high, uh, high point of view, it's basically the same. Alice is sending tokens A and receiving tokens B. Other example is governance. So what we could like to do, for example, is uh, voting organized in this way. So that Alice sending, uh, is sending one vote for option A, which then is kept as a secret inside of a chain. So this, this state where that votes for A uh, are 1 and for B is 0, this is the secret. So for now, no one can see it. The voting proceeds. And only at the end, the result is revealed. So this is very different from what actually happens in, in DAOs today right now. Right now, all the votes are public, and the partial results, results can be seen on chain at all times. And this is not how we uh, organize normal non-blockchain votings. Like in normal political votings, for example, uh, everything needs to be uh, private until the very end where the results are revealed. And this is actually pretty important because otherwise um, it's much easier to collude, much easier to skew the elections for some particular side. For example, um, you can you can think about what would happen if half an hour before a presidential election it would be known that there are there is a difference of only 100 votes for one side, and obviously it would be pretty easy for the other side to buy 100 votes. This is um, similar to what happens, for example, in uh, Polkadot parachain auctions, where uh, where the parachain slot is auctioned and the highest bidder is winning. So there, if there would be a single point of end of the auction, it would be pretty easy to background the elections in the way that of providing just enough votes at the very end uh, to, to win. So uh, without the chain secrets, it's, it's impossible to reveal the results at, only at the very end easier to organize collusion and possible to background the elections. So now the question is, and we've seen some examples, the question is how to actually organize chain secrets. So for now there are projects which are using two different primitives trying to achieve uh, secrets which are kept by blockchain. One is called trusted execution environment, the other is called multi-party computation. And they differ basically in every aspect. So uh, trusted execution en environment is uh, hardware based. Basically the idea here is that uh, each validator has a very specific chip. Most of the time is produced by Intel and it's uh, SGX chip. Uh, and this chip um, contains some 
enclave. Some part where the data is kept so private that even owner of this chip has no access to it. So uh, this way, this computer enriched with this particular chip uh, can perform computation. And the pr premise here is that the, even the owner of the machine cannot enter uh, the data. So this computation is, in a way, private. Projects experimenting with this paradigm are Secret Network, Fala Network, and Hyperledger Avalon. And the security model basically here is that we do need to trust in hardware and in its manufacturer. As I said, the biggest problem right now here, or like in my opinion, the biggest problem is that basically there is a singular manufacturer of these chips, which is Intel. And uh, the trust in the entire model would mean here that we need to trust that in Intel is producing these chips in a correct way. So the main drawback is vendor lockup. Not only because we need to trust that Intel is producing these chips in the correct way, but also we need to trust that it's not going to stop producing them. Otherwise, the entire model fails. And the other primitive is multi party computation, which is purely software based. Uh, this is what we are doing in LF0 in a project called Liminal. Uh, the other uh, projects doing that is Partition and hash Hashclock. And the idea here is that. Uh, we are building a committee of uh, nodes, let's say 30 to 50 nodes, that will be sharing secrets among themselves. So uh, to actually reveal the secret, the majority of this committee would need to gather and exchange their, their shares of the secret. So this is very much co like consensus, that uh, we believe that it's going to it's going to be secured because we trust in the committee. So we trust that no one will uh, perform 51% attack. Unless a uh, majority of the committee gathers, the secrets are safe. So the main drawback is that it's slightly slower than uh, the trust execution environment. Of course, the, the main, um, the main uh, benefit is that we do not need to trust any hardware manufacturer. And basically, the security model here is very similar to the secu security model that we already believe in, um, to the security model of proof of stake. So we have a committee. It can be the committee of the nodes which are staking enough tokens. We can slash the nodes which are uh, performing malicious actions. So this is the world that we very much understand and, and uh, pretty much feel secure about. So main things to take away from this talk. ZK snarks can be used to give us private transactions or even advanced versions of private transactions, but they will not give us private DeFi. Actually, most probably they will never give us private DeFi in the sense that we understand DeFi now, in the sense of users interacting with contracts. MPC or trusted execution environments can give us more, can give us private De DeFi, and uh, it's going to be as secure as we believe these primitives. And the other last thing is that we actually do believe multi party computation. We already do have deployed projects which are basing its security on the fact that committee is not revealing secrets. Such projects as Wormhole, Multichain, and basically all the other uh, Guardian based bridges, they are actually actively guarding billions of dollars right now. And while, of course, most of you have seen, uh, have heard about uh, bridge hacks uh, in the last year. Uh, right now, it seems that the situation is, is getting more and more stable, and the committee sizes of even 20 are rather enough to not collude uh, among the nodes. Like the hacks which are actually happening right now at Bridges, uh, they are just bugs in the smart contract. They right now almost never happen because the committee is colluding. So apparently, we do have some trust in the MPC model already. Um, that's all for today. So thank you for listening.